All right. So first up, what is encryption? Encryption is essentially changing data uh, or information, uh, especially to prevent unauthorized access. And so what it essentially does is make it unreadable or unusable, really, uh, unless you have a certain key to unlock the, um, the, the information or data. And so one common misconception is a lot of people use the word encryption and encoding interchangeably. They're very similar, but they're also very different. So encryption changes the data itself, meaning like you have your ones and zeros, those ones and zeros are flipped, like they're scrambled. They're, it's not the same data at all. While encoding, what that does is that the data does not change, it just changes form. So for instance, like encoding a decimal like one or yeah, that's a terrible example. Uh, encoding a decimal 10, which is one and zero, into hex will change it into an A. It's the same data, it means the same thing, it just takes a different form. Why did it go? Okay, never mind. Sorry, this does not show the same slide. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so yeah, so those are the differences between encryption and coding. I just wanted to go over that real quickly. Uh, so basically, there are two types of encryption. There is symmetric and asymmetric encryption. And so I'll be going over those a little more later, but first, oh, now I'll be going over them now. So we have symmetric cryptography, which is really only one key used. And so I have this little graphic up here to kind of briefly explain it. So in every kind of example for encryption, you're going to have two people. You're going to have Alice and you're going to have Bob. Just every time. That's how it goes. So essentially, this is Alice sending Bob a message. And so what she does is that here it is, here it is in plain text, and they encrypt it with a key. Now, Bob also has this one key. So when it's sent, you know, say I am some outside person trying to find out what the message is, I do not have the key, so it's just a bunch of gibberish to me. I can't really figure it out. Uh, but Bob has the key, so he can unlock it and get the message back. Essentially, and another kind of analogy of this is you get a message and you put it in a box and you lock it with a key, and then you give Bob the key and you say, and he just is able to unlock it. So. That is symmetric cryptography, um, but next is asymmetric cryptography. This is when two keys are used. So a lot of times, uh, this is what most modern cryptography and modern encryption uses. Um, so if you ever hear about like a private and public key pair, that's what this is. This is asymmetric cryptography. Um, and so they, yeah, right there, so they have a public and private key. And so it says the same message, Alice is sending it to Bob. Um, they will use Bob's public key to encrypt it. So, and then Bob can decrypt it with using his own private key. Uh, and so this kind of adds a, little, a lot more security in terms of you know, exactly how you can, um, how you send the messages, you know, because if I have it here, cool, I have Bob's public key, but I need his private key. And um, you get to a lot more specific uh, into some things like you know, validation. So how do I know that, you know, uh, this message, you know, like, gets to Bob. It looks like, okay, well, only Bob knows his private key. And so everyone, so I should probably explain the public and private key. So public key is known to everyone. Everyone can, like, it's just out there. But private key is, like, the one you want to keep secret. And so what you do is that you encrypt using, um, so if you wanted to send a message to me, you use my public key to encrypt it. Uh, and with weird fancy math stuff, it can only be reversed using my private key. Um, yeah. So the reason why is, um, you have the public key is so that, like, I guess any message that was sent like towards you only can be like encrypted by you. Exactly. You exactly. So it's it means it's pretty much locking it, and the only one who can open it is me. Okay, I got you. Um, because ideally, I would have, I'd be the only one who has my private key. So yeah, that's a much better way so of anybody can send, but only you can. Yes. So like, if I wanted to send you a message, all I need to do is look at your public key, encrypt my data, throw it to you, and you're the only, you ideally should be the only one who could be able to crack it. Um, I want to say it also works in reverse, however. Bob can also use Bob's private key to encrypt, and yes. anybody else can use Bob's I was about to, I was about to mention that. That also kind of verifies like if you really don't want to you don't really care about uh, so their mathematical inverses, basically. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, it's a bunch of fun to mess about. Get into that <coughs> next slide. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, if you don't really care about thing, it being secret, but you want to make sure they know it's from you. Uh, so say like I'm, um, let's say, 
posting a uh, posting something on a form, right? I don't really care about it if it's being like if it's encrypted or not. But I, but they do care that it came from me. I can encrypt it with my private key, and if you try to um, if you try to decrypt it with anything but my public key, it won't work. So how do you know it came from me? You use my public key, and it works. Yeah. So there you get some kind of two-way validation. Uh, so you can know it's only I can read it, and you know it's also from me. So pretty cool stuff there. Now, I'm a nerd. I would love to get into like, the specifics on how this works. However, that's like an entire meeting by itself because it gets crazy into the math, which we'll kind of talk about here. There are many different encryption algorithms. So you have something like AES, which is, I think, something. Advanced encryption standard. That's the one, advanced encryption standard. Uh, then you have RSA, which is, I think, three names. Um, Blowfish, and then much, much more. And so, the, but essentially all these algorithms follow the same idea of this irreversible math without you know, knowing some magic number. And what is this magic number? Um, essentially what they do is they take two really large, and I mean insanely large, prime numbers, right? And then they do some weird math with it, some modulus stuff, which is like irreversible. Uh, if you haven't taken discrete math yet, that's what they talk about in there. Um, and essentially, it makes it really hard for you to uh, reverse the process to be able to figure out what that number was that they used to encrypt it. It's really hard, but you can still do it. And this is not a joke. This process can be reversed, but it will take a trillion years. Like with yeah, our current computer. Yeah, because you essentially have to just brute force it. Like, all right, try this prime number. That didn't work. Try this prime number. That didn't work. Try this prime number. You get the idea. Yes, and I'll, that's what I was going to say. Using our current computing power, this will take a very long time. Yeah. However, with you know, quantum computing, oh, hey, we can do like, things a trillion times faster. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so I was going to say, if you want to get into some research, there's a like, bunch of research being done on post-quantum encryption stuff. Uh, it's super interesting. Like some methods yeah, that are out so there. so basically the reason quantum breaks it is there's some algorithm that some dude postulated like 20 years ago <laughs> about how quantum computers can like specifically solve this like prime number problem like very, very, fast. very quickly. So basically there's a lot of research going into how do we do encryption without prime numbers? Yeah. Because there's not yet any sort of idea of how to fix, of how to do that with quantum Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah, but as of right now, our jobs are pretty secure because, you know, if we know this, then we can deal with it. But then quantum computing will put us all out of a job. To, That's a we're joke. We're going to have to switch to an entire different system of encryption once a month. Right. When, what, how, what's, the, what's the timeline for quantum computers, like, actually being a thing? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Do they have it? Forever. I think it's always going to be 10 years away. I was going to say, because they said, like, I remember when I came here, like when they, when like this when this was happening my freshman year when it was like this type of meeting they said oh yeah it'll be around in ten years and like four years later yeah. they're still saying like ten I mean, to fifteen years. I mean they're getting close and NIST has. Come I, was, out. I know NIST has NIST said. NIST very recently came out with a list of algorithms for post quantum encryption. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Say so we're we're getting ready for it because. But yeah. Anyways. Uh, but that's kind of how encryption works at a very, very high level is just modulus. And like I said, I would love to do a uh, full meeting, but after elections, like, we'd be here till about 730. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's super cool stuff. If you're a math nerd like me, you'll love it. Oh, we have them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, just not very clear. Right. Uh, but... Yeah, that's about, that's about all I had for encryption. Like I said, it's very broad. I'm open to any questions. If you have anything about asymmetric or symmetric cryptography, just kind of if you want to know more about, you know, what's any more differences or exactly how, what the two differences are between them, how it works, all In that. In what situation would you really use uh, symmetric? Symmetric? Is that like Caesar cipher? Or so Caesar cipher is a version of encoding. Yeah. Oh, okay. so because the data isn't actually changing, it's just kind of changing forms, it's just doing it a very... So like, in what situation... Depending on your definition. I would define it as a coding. C 
Caesar cipher was a very, very early form of, of encryption. Yes, that's a better way. Now, something like, what's it called? The Le Chief? Yeah. Like, the 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 the, the, the Caesar, not the the the, the complicated oh, Caesar cipher. I know what you're talking about. The it's it, yeah. Visionaire. That's the one. I don't know why I said Lashif. That's the name of the assignment. Visionaire, <laughs> <laughs> you can use words yeah. though, which makes yeah. it more like encrypting. Yeah, I'm about to say that because you actually have a key that yeah, you use. You have a key that Your you key isn't like a number that you offset yeah. the alphabet by. Don't forget, I sent you a demo. That's right. There's a demo. My oh, goodness. Oh my <laughs> I didn't have a slide for it. That's why I forgot. Yeah, I'm about to say I'm like ten minutes. That's nothing. <laughs> I really blew through that. No, there's a there's a demo. Um, shoot, where is it? Is this it? This is it. Okay, so there's a uh, there's a tool called OpenSSL. So if you have your if you have your uh, nice. Linux or your Kali or whatever it is spun up, awesome. Uh, this is the man page for S. Let me make that bigger for y'all. I'm sorry. Control plus. Yeah. That's better. That's too big. There we go. Anyways, so what it does is essentially allows you to encrypt stuff. So here you can say there's like uh, cipher algorithms, digest all stuff that public key algorithms, you know what that is. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we're just going to do, there we go. Uh, we're going to use this one, this one um, command here. So we're going to echo super secret secret, which what that does is that just prints it out to the command line. And so then if you remember the pipe operator that Bronson went over during our bash, you know what this does. But if you don't remember, essentially what this does is it takes that output and puts it into the next command as an input. So as an input, OpenSSL is then going to encrypt it using AES-256. Uh, and it's going to be, we're going to even flag saying it, telling it not to salt. Um, we'll, get in, we'll get into salt what, your meeting next, yeah, next, we'll week? next week? It's stuff with passwords and hashing, and also, he'll talk about it. Throw in TAC A to, not, uh, to base 64 encoded. Okay, like that? Yeah. Okay. He told me to do that. I'm, I'm trusting him on it. <laughs> I haven't used this much. Anyways, and then so we pipe that into a T, which just lets us see it in, in a pretty easier way. So that's the volume. I thought I turned off your computer. <laughs> So it's going to ask, ask us to do a password. So I'm going to be a very secure person and use password. It's going to ask for it again. And yeah, so here it is. Wait, this is, this is in base 64. That's why I said Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is... Um, because otherwise it was just like a bunch of like non-printable gibberish. Oh, oh okay. that makes sense. Anyways, actually here, let me do it without it so you can compare Yeah. Anyway, so that's what, you, that's what it looks like, like in straight binary. This is what the computer tries to print out. And as you can see, it doesn't make so much sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, space. What? Where? Because it literally oh, space. this one right here? <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty confused. It literally encrypts the binary. Yeah. It, it, yeah. 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 I'm about to say, so yeah. that's, that's a good point. So encryption happens on the binary level. Yeah. It, so like legitimate zeros and ones are being flipped or whatever, which is why when essentially all this, all that the command line is doing is getting in binary, converting it to an ASCII character and throwing it into the, into the uh, terminal. Right, real hard. Yeah, and so it's trying, <laughs> it's trying its best. Uh, but using encoding, we can turn it into base 64, which will always be printable values. And that's what it looks like. And so actually, wait, no, that wouldn't work, Never mind. Uh, I was gonna decode that into base 64 or from base 64, but all you'd get is just this. Yeah. Um, well, you can uh, pipe that in, or you can cat oh, that that's file, true. pipe it into base 64. Like literally, command into base 64. Yeah. I think that's it. Do I have to do that? No, attack D is to decode. Oh, but okay, yeah, I see what you mean then. Yeah, there you go. See, same, same thing, same thing. Um, anyways, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the difference between encoding. It's the same message, but now it's just in a way that's a lot readable. Tac and, A makes it readable. Yeah. Yeah. Tac A. Uh, actually, if we want to get more specific, we can look into the actual documentation to see what they describe Tac A doing. 
and I passed it. Uh, so the doc it so the there. Man page is for OpenSSL, which has a bunch of subcommands. I think hit sh shift G. Yeah. Oh, and then you can do OpenSSL tag ENC or OpenSSL dash ENC in that man page. Okay. Oh. What was that? I'm sorry. Okay, now let's see what A does. A base sixty four. Okay, it just it just it just straight just feeds it the base sixty four. <laughs> okay, I don't know what they called it. A. Oh, now a capital A. If the A option is set, then base sixty four process data on one line. In case, in case you oh boy! <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, but yeah, and so there's also different. There's a different. That's true. We can now decode it. Using the pathway. Where is it? There it is. Yeah. So here we can then go to the same uh, enc encryption uh, little suite for OpenSSL. Give it the same algorithm. Tell it to decode. Uh, and then we can feed it the text.enc file. Do we need to see it? No. So this, this one is all the same command. So it has a function that okay. says, hey, give me, a, give me a file and I'll decrypt it. Okay. okay. So also the password flag is TAC-K. TAC-K? Okay. So we say TAC-K and then we give it the password, which was password. I'm so happy we chose the same password. <laughs> that, was, that was not planned. <laughs> Anyways, so we run that. Whoa. Bad magic number. Yeah, so we yeah. just um So just remember that what however you encrypt it, you also have to decrypt it the same way. So we said no salt. We also said there's a password. <laughs> so make sure you say no, no salt, salt and there's a password. Oh and don't forget the base sixty four. Yeah, yeah, also base sixty four. How long did that take? <laughs> well that wasn't That took minutes. fifteen minutes, are you serious? Okay. We are a professional organization of cyber. What's up? I didn't expect anything. No clue. We have no clue what that means. I'm assuming that's some type of error from. It's an error. Yeah, it's an error. Oh, it's an error. It's an error that has to do with the salt. Because oh, that would make sense. That would make sense. Salt. Yeah. Okay, so because salt was such a big deal here, I'll just mention it, and he'll talk about it more. So what they do when they store your password is that they hash it, which is again an irreversible um, type of math doing it, uh, done to the password to essentially protect it so if you know someone gets in their database they don't see everyone's passwords in plain text it's all hashed and they're like i have no clue what this is because i can't reverse it uh right. but there's still common passwords and so you can look up hashes of common passwords and then just compare and just like okay because it's the same algorithm oh that's the same one all right their password is password and then boom you're in uh so what they do is that they salt it by adding some information essentially to the password itself and then run the hash on it so it's completely different uh, and say, and the hash is so much as one binary difference, completely different hash. Yeah. So he'll TLDR, talk more. He'll talk more about that. TLDR salt means they add some extra data on top of it just to make sure it doesn't look the exact same. And if it's expecting salt, then you said no salt. Yeah, then it's not. Yeah. It's not going to filter yeah, out that. Bad. Right. And it will basically tack on at the beginning of whatever you. It'll tack on like what the salt was, yeah. so it can grab the salt and then. Yeah. And um. Do one of you two want to talk about the CTF? Yeah. So if you guys want to do encryption challenges, I think we have three up right now. Um, CTF. Let me go to the website yeah, real quick. Let's go to the website. It's, um, the registration is. If I can it's in our type, my Discord. goodness. It should also be on there. Creating Boom! Account. Look at that. You can register in the top. Yeah. Sign up. What's your username, Bronson? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to. Anyways, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they did some. 
Last year, uh, for like Cybersecurity Awareness Month, they had a bunch of CT, we, uh, we, or Kevin at least did a bunch of CTF stuff. Super fun. Uh, it's also a really good way to like kind of flex your cyber muscles. So if ever you want to like learn some new things or kind of see how much you do actually know, um, this is like another good thing I'd recommend. So like, and where in the uh, Oh yeah, that's right. Just ask code and registration code. Yeah, just upload it. Anyways, and also you can compete with your friends. Look at this. There are prizes for the winner if the scorecard votes. Wait, wait. Where am I? Did you say preview? Wait, where am I? What? Did you say? Oh, I'm not even on here. That's embarrassing. Oh, I think Colin said you. Oh, I think if you're in. Oh, you have it. You're not on there. Am I an admin? Yeah, we have you in since your name's person. Darn. If you log in, you actually, no, don't log in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll, no, I won't. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so you can, you can join in. You can, you know, laugh at your friend as you have a higher score than them. Um, and then you have the challenges here. Oh, you need to log in. Oh, well. So that's a great way to uh, learn some new stuff or find out more about the stuff we've shown you guys already. Exactly. We don't really know anything. Uh, so good you can learn, uh, Kevin, can how beginner friendly are these challenges? They go from very easy to there's some Linux challenges where you SSH into a box and you have to figure it out. <laughs> gotcha, so easy to very to intermediate. There's some very easy challenges. I'm going to say very easy because they're easier subjective. But there's some beginner friendly ones that can get you started. 